Hi guys, welcome back to Twisted Stitches. My name is Tammy, how's everybody doing? I am here today to do a getting to know you type tag. Now this channel, you know, is fiber arts related. Usually I do a podcast, crochet, knitting, show and tell type thing, all that kind of fun stuff. Or we have yarn unboxings, yarn reviews, pattern reviews, but I was tagged by Laura at Mad Mimi's Crochet and Farming. And this is a really fun opportunity, I think, to give you guys the opportunity to get to know me a little bit better beyond the fiber arts world and beyond some of the stuff we've discussed in the years past of, you know, little things that you all know I like to do. You guys know a lot about me anyway. So hopefully you guys will enjoy. And yeah, so <laughs> let's get on with the questions. Now first, because I know I'll forget before the end of this video, I'm going to do my tags. First of all, if you're watching this and you wanna do this, if you have a channel and you wanna upload a video, do it and let me know that you did it so I can watch it. Or you can tag me or let me know that you're gonna answer the questions in the Facebook group that we have. Um, all the links will be in my description box as always. You can click that link, go straight to my Facebook group. Then you guys can do the getting to know you tag questions and answer them over there. I would love to hear everybody's answers. Um, and so here are just some random people that I was just trying to think of who to tag. I don't know how many people have been tagged in this. Um, there's not a hashtag or anything, so I don't know who's done this. And if I tag you and you've already done it, just let me know you've done it. Or if you've been tagged already, just, uh, just kind of give me a heads up. I appreciate it. So I'm going to tag Reggie at J Hook Crochet. Uh, Catherine at Kath's eye, uh, eye Catchers. I'm tagging Natalie at Natalie's Closet. Gary at Urban Yarn. Um, who else can we tag? How about Darla at the Crafty Yarn Owl? And so if I haven't said your name, it's just because trying to think off the top of my head, sometimes I can't remember everybody, but anybody wants to do this, you can say, I tagged you. I don't care. Just let me know that you're doing it. I appreciate it guys. So let's get on with the questions. Okay. So the first question says, what is your favorite childhood memory? I do have a lot of good childhood memories when I was uh, really a lot younger, but a couple of the ones that stand out to me, the first one was I was about four years old. We lived up north in New Jersey and my grandfather, my pop-pop took, my pop-pop and my grandmother took me to the Bronx Zoo. And at the Bronx Zoo at the time, I don't know if they still do it, you were able to ride the elephants and the camels. And the line to ride the elephant was like forever. I remember just waiting in line and waiting in line. And you really couldn't tell how large an elephant was. And I remember I was four years old. You can't really tell how large an elephant was. I've always been scared of heights. I'm still scared of heights. So we wait in line for God knows how long, forever. We get up to where the elephants are, where you kind of like get onto the, they have like a ring around it and like a blanket over the elephant. And I looked at it and I looked at how tall I was gonna be on top of this elephant. And I was like, oh no, Pop-Up, I don't think this is a good idea at all. And he literally picked me up put me on the elephant. He said, after waiting in line all that time, you are going on this elephant ride. And that, I, I mean, it was, I was so scared at first, but I loved it afterwards as we were doing it. So that was a good memory. And another like super fun one is, now that's on my mom's side, my grandfather on my mom's side. On my dad's side, we did a lot of camping um, when I was very young. And we used to go to a place called Chips Folly in New Jersey. And we were there like in the summertime, like almost every weekend and then a week or two in the summer in general. And my uncle and my aunt were like, I would call them the better off type people. And they, they were the ones that came, we all had tents and they're the ones that came with like um, an RV. And he always brought his dirt bike. Well, it was a, uh, not a dirt bike. It was the one that you could do both on. Uh, it was a street and dirt bike. It was like, I forget what they're called. Forgive me about that. But anyway, he used to go and ride us around, you know, the campground and the trails and in the woods and everything like that. And my grandmother, and my grandmother, she was a, a big girl, a big lady. And I don't know how it happened, but everybody got her to get on the back of his, uh, of his bike. And I just, just, 
her face oh my god just she's hanging on and she's screaming and laughing my 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 grandma on my dad's side my grandma fike had the best laugh when she would laugh and oh my god just watching her just ah! just oh my god it was so funny it's just little things like that will stand out just forever in my memory there's lots of other silly things like that but those were two of my fun standout ones so so that was so those were a couple of my like really fun standout ones uh the second question if i can go back in time where would i go what age and time period or year if i could go back in time uh, I would probably stick to my time period. I wouldn't go, I don't know, like, I don't think I would go too far back. I wouldn't go like into the 1800s or anything like that because quite frankly, central AC and heat has got me a little bit spoiled. So um, I don't, you know, be able to turn on a stove with just turning it on kind of good stuff and washing machines and stuff like that. I don't want to beat clothes against a rock or anything like that. But if I could go back in time, and I, I'm probably not the only woman to say this, especially if you've had a failed marriage relationship or whatever, I would probably go back to the year 1996. Yeah. Either the end of 95 or the beginning of 96 sometime. And I would, I would have walked away from that relationship. And the reason I picked that year is because both of my kids were already born. And so like, I wouldn't go back to before my kids were born because I'd want to make sure my kids were born. So my daughter was born in July of 95 and my son was in August of 88. So yeah and i would do things a lot especially if i know what i know now and i could go back to then yeah it would be like the beginning of 1996 and i would just do things so much differently so much but yeah so that's that's what i would do uh the third question what is the one thing i changed about my past or present life so one thing i would change about my past or present life Basically, I guess it would just go back to what I was just saying in the previous one. Um, I would really like to go back to 1996 and know what I know now and walk away with both my kids and do everything instead of waiting and, and keep on trying like I did. Um, I think I would have done it. And so I would have had more time to do a lot better in life because after that relationship went bad, like almost five years later, I would have had all those years, those five years to do what I wanted to do. So that's what I would do, I guess. Um, yeah, so same, it seems like, a, for me, it's like the same question. Okay. Uh, number four, do I have any brothers or sisters and how many? Yes, yes, I have two sisters. Um, Stephanie, who is five and a half years younger than me and Lorelai, who is almost 15 years younger than me. I am the oldest. Number five, did I have pets as a child? Uh, what did I have and do I have any now? Yes, I had pets as a child. Um, the main pet I had growing up, his name was Dopey. He was just a mutt. Um, he lived with us. He lived 15 years, I think he was. He, he We had Dopey from the time I was a baby. So yeah, we had him for or like right before I was born. So he was 15 years old when he passed. He was a mutt. He was like, I don't know, just like a 40 pound mutt. Kind of looked almost like, um, he looked like he had like Rottweiler in him. If you looked at his face, he looked like he had Rottweiler. He had the brown little two eyebrows right here and he had a black face, but he was small. He was kind of, he was real small, but uh, he was named Dopey because when he was a puppy and they brought him home, he would run and bump into everything and, you know, bump into furniture and all this other stuff. And so they just thought he was a goofy dog and they named him Dopey. Come to find out like about a year later, 
uh, he was blind. I guess he was born blind. And so he was like, he was great. He never bumped into anything unless you like move the furniture. And then if you moved anything in the house, then he would come into the house from being outside and he'd bump into it. So, the, but I kind of feel, kind of feel bad that he was named Dopey and it wasn't his fault, <laughs> but it, it fit him. He was a, he was a good dog, real good dog. And I had rabbits and I had cats and I had a cat. All my cats were named Lucy. I don't know why. I just had a thing for the name Lucy. So I had rabbits, cats, we had fish. Um, that's about it. We didn't have anything like, oh, we had birds, like regular parakeets and stuff like that, but that's about it, but nothing too crazy. Now, do I have any animals now? Yes, I do. I have two dogs and that's why we're outside because it is a beautiful day in Florida and I wanted them to be able to come outside and run around a little bit. And let me see, get them. Gizmo, come on, come on guys, come here. Come here, come here, come, 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 come here, up, 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 up. Well, this one is Peaches. She looks a little rough because she's been running around. This is Peaches. She's a multi-poo, and you guys have seen her before. And we got, oh, come here. And we got Gizmo. She is a Lhasa Apsa, Pomeranian Lhasa Apsa, and she now has hitchhikers all in her hair that I'm going to have to comb out and go inside. Uh, yes, I have two dogs right now, and that is it. Say bye. <laughs> Go play. Number six. Do I have any kids, and how many? And I think a lot of you know this already. I have two adult children. I have my son, Ricky, who is 33, and my daughter, Erica, who is 26. And I have five granddaughters. Uh, Mia, Analia, Bella, Isabella, Ava, and Riley. So I... My son's been busy. My daughter has one, my son's had the other, so. <laughs> yeah, so I have two children and five granddaughters. And according to my daughter, I'm not having any more, so that might be it, but you know how that goes. They say they're not having any more, but she might, she might. Maybe I'll get a grandson, but if not, that'll be fine. Number seven, what did I want to be when I was growing up as a kid? What did I want to be as a kid when I was growing up? I wanted to be an actress and a dancer. <laughs> I went to dance in school from the time I was like four years old up until the time we moved here to Florida. Um, and I loved, I loved dancing. I took tap, toe, ballet, jazz. Um, I liked being on stage i went i did several competitions was on tv i always kind of wanted to be an actor an actress it's just i don't know that's really what i wanted to be um but when we moved here to florida all that kind of went down the drain so uh, there wasn't a lot of opportunities in florida plus wasn't easy getting around here growing up in new jersey you know i was able to hop on a bus or hop on a train and get into New York City, if the opportunity arose, it was more, it was easier to get into like the city or something like that and get to places and get to auditions if I wanted to do that as I got older. But uh, we moved down here right before, right as, we moved down here when I was about 14 and a half years old. So right after my youngest sister was born, she was four months old when we moved down here so yeah so yeah i wanted to be an actress so yeah number eight name one place that i would love to live i always said i wanted to move to like the uk or something like that but i don't really want to i don't know i don't want to really leave america um so where I really want to live and where I'm, where I really want to go in the near future, like maybe in the next five or so years, is I'd like to move up towards the Tennessee mountains, right? Like on the, the border of North Carolina and Tennessee, in that area, I want to be in the woods. I want to be like near a lake or something like that. I just, I really like that idea of living like that. As you hear, I'm like on a main road, so hopefully that's not bothering you too much. Um, I hate kind of living 
like I would like to be able to go outside in my backyard and there's nothing but the back 40 behind me, you know, whereas instead of, you know, your neighbors all around you watching you and saying, what is she doing outside with the camera? <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I've always wanted to be in the country for sure. So when we took that trip up and did the Tale of the Dragon, fell in love. I was like, yep, this is where I want to go. That's really where I want to be. So hopefully in the near future, uh, maybe less than 10 years from now, hopefully I'll be in that area. That's where I'm really hoping to be. Number nine, who was my first boy or girlfriend? Who was my first boyfriend? And what was he or she like? Um, we moved down here before, right before I turned 15. Um, so like, I didn't really have a boyfriend per se. Uh, when we were still up, when I was still up north in the sixth grade, um, a boy named Eddie McKenna asked me out, but it wasn't like we went anywhere. It was, we were walking around the, me and my friend Sandy were walking around the neighborhood and he was walking around and he said something to the fact that he liked me or somebody said, Sandy said that he liked me. I said that I liked him. We met up in the backyard of I don't even know whose yard it was and he asked me if I wanted to go out and he gave me a peck a real quick peck and he said he liked me and that was it and we talked on the phone and we never did anything and I remember going home and telling my mom that I was going out with uh, my boyfriend I had a boyfriend and his name was Eddie and she's like well where are you going and I was like nowhere we're just going out <laughs> And back then it was kind of like you went out, you went out with somebody, but you didn't go anywhere. I don't know. But we were also only in the sixth grade. I was like, what, 12? I think I was like 12 years old. So that was my first boyfriend. So yeah, um, I had a couple boyfriends, you know, before we moved down here, but that was... I didn't really have a major boy. I never had a regular boyfriend per se. You know, that was it. Just a couple little, little flirty things, you know. Maybe I did go to a dance one time with one guy, but that was it. You know, really, that was it. <laughs> um, I don't know if it was just a different time or something like that. Or I don't know if everybody still does that now. I don't know, it's weird. I know, like, I didn't really... We didn't go out. <laughs> just, I like you, yeah, I like you, and... That was it. We were going out. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. And we never broke up. So, Eddie, we're still going out. <laughs> no. Number 10. Have I ever made a gift for somebody that they either didn't like it or they just, like, gave it away or something like that? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, it's kind of like... It was one of those situations that... They asked for it, they wanted it, they knew what the outcome was, they even showed me what they wanted. I made it, and I don't know if it, even though it looked exactly the same, it was almost the same yarn, everything, it was like they were disappointed in it when they got it, and they never wore it. So I never ever made them anything ever again. And so they are definitely not knit or crochet worthy. I will never, Ever, even if they asked me, even if they tried to pay me, I'd be like, nope, because it just, you know, you do all that work and you take all that time to do it. And then they didn't, they don't use it. I don't even know what happened to it. I never saw it. So I really don't think they ever used it. I don't think they did anything with it. So nope, nope. Uh, yeah. So yes, I did have that happen. Um, most of the time, most of the time, either they like it and they use it, which I do have that, and you, I've seen people using the things that I've given them, or they say they like it, but at least they're not rude about it, and you at least, even if you're pretty sure they don't like it, you're like, well, whatever, you know? Um, maybe you won't make them like an elaborate thing, maybe you'll just make them something real simple, like a little lapgan or something like that, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, so if, if you know, like if somebody makes you something, even if it's butt ugly, 
or it's just horrible, whatever, like it's a beginner and they're just learning how to crochet or knit or something and it doesn't look exactly like you think it was gonna look, at least be nice about it and at least, I, I think even Laura said that, take a picture with it and just be like, thank you so much. Even if you just pull it out when they're around or something, I don't know, it just makes you feel good and it kind of gives you the confidence to keep on going. It does, so it did for me anyway, it does for me, so. Oh, you can see my ring light in them. <laughs> That's the shadow, the sun is on me as you can see, but you can see my ring light outline. <laughs> So that's what that is, guys. Sorry about that. Number 11. We're almost done. I got one more after this. So number 11 asks, where was I born and do I still live in the same... Sorry. I'm going to have to move over. Sorry, guys. The lighting's getting a little messed up. I tried to move it a little bit to make it a little less whatever. But the sun's peeking through a tree and then the stand has a ring light. That doesn't work, but I just brought it out here to do this, so. So number 11 is, where were you born and do you still live in the same state, area, or country? And uh, I was born in New Jersey and I moved down to Florida. Well, my mother moved me down to Florida um, right before I turned 15 and I've been in Florida ever since. So no, I don't still live up there and I live in the United States and I've always lived in the United States. Number 12, and the last one. Number 12 is you meet your 18 year old self and you're allowed to say three words, only three words, what do you say? And I thought about this, cause I was like, man, three words, that's all you're allowed to say? And my 18 year old self, I don't know if I would totally understand this, but if I went back and I, was able to talk to my 18 year old self, I would say, I'd wanna say a lot, of course. I think everybody would, but I would definitely wanna say, it'll be okay. It's gonna be okay or something like that. It'll be okay. So yeah, I don't know if my 18 year old self at that moment would know, but hopefully my 19 and my 20 year old self would remember that or it would stay in the back of my head and then all those things we talked about <laughs> from like, I'd go back to when I was 26 after I had my kids, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it would all sink in or something. I don't know. So yeah, I think those are the three words I would say. Um, yeah, I think those are the three words I would definitely say. So that is it. Those are the only questions that were on here. So um, I tagged a few people. If I haven't tagged you, I'm sorry. You know how my mind works. I just... I'm out there so like I said if you want to uh, if you want to do a video or if you want to answer the questions you can leave it in the comment section that'll be fine if you want to do that I will have all the questions listed in my description box if you want to copy and paste it if you want to answer the questions and tag me in Facebook or something like that let me know you did it I would love to hear your guys's answer um, if there's anything you ever want to know about me you can email me. My email is always in the description box or you can message me. Sorry about the noise. You can message me and you guys know I always respond. I'm pretty good at responding to you unless it gets lost in YouTube land somewhere, the messages, which does happen anyway. So anyway, that is it guys. I will be coming on here pretty soon with my regular podcast. I have a couple of things going on that I am dying to share with you. So that's it guys. Hope you got to know me a little bit better. Uh, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing to my channel. I appreciate you guys so very much. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. Love you guys. We'll be talking really, really soon. Bye.